Lord Jesus, we're so grateful and so thankful for another day that you've blessed us. A bright, shiny day, praise God, to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Bless us now. Pour out your spirit today. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Listen, could, could I just take a moment to tell you about the last five days that I've had? I'm, 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 I'm filled up to the brim. Praise God. On uh, My wife passed away uh, two years ago, as you all know. And, and, uh, but Saturday, which was her, uh, would, be her, would have been her birthday, I, I, I kind of heard her singing an old song. It, it said, she said, I'm not doubting about this way. Praise God. I know holiness is right, and I'm walking in the light. I'm not doubting about this way. And then on Sunday, I went to church, and uh, Pastor Neil, he talked about, taught us about forgiving others and others forgiving you and you forgiving yourself. And then on strength for the day, Pastor Neil and, and, and Minister Ralph, praise God, encouraging us. And yesterday, praise God, Pastor Blotson just lost his mind in praise. So I'm, hallelujah, I'm filled up this morning. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. But I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, Elijah. Elijah had a string of unbroken successes. He won a face-off against 850 false prophets. He then killed those 850 false prophets. 1 Kings 18, 17 through 40. And he prophesied, prayed for, and saw the end of a three-year drought in 1 Kings 18, 41 through 46. But he ended up running from Jezebel, who threatened his life in 1 Kings 19 and 2. This left Elijah wanting God to kill him in 1 Kings 19 and 4. Elijah's story Illustrates the point I want to make. You have to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and keep your attention on him. Because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs 16 and 18 says. The moment you start patting yourself on the back and believing your own press releases, you're in trouble. It doesn't matter what you accomplish. You are still only a man or a woman. You aren't, you aren't doing those things. God living in you is doing them. Elijah didn't have the patience to endure in this situation because he got caught up in his pride. If you aren't careful, the circumstances of life will cause you to take your eyes off Jesus. Patience is the ability to fix your attention on Jesus, not looking to the right or the left. It's the ability to remain unmoved by your circumstances. Just do what God tells you to do until he tells you something differently. Elijah got caught up in self-pity and saying something he knew was a lie, uh, that he was the only one left. Praise the name of our God. This is what happens when you focus on your circumstances you know things aren't really as bad as you think they are but you get so focused on the problem that you that that it becomes overwhelming you have to put things in perspective stop focusing on your problem and start focusing on god some people miss god because they look for him in the spectacular but god delights in faith and you need to be listening for him in the still, small voice that is on the inside of you. Elijah did not fulfill God's purpose for his life because he lost focus. He got caught up in pride and took his attention off God, the author and the finisher of his faith. He quit operating in patience. Elijah missed it big time, but God still loved him. You can find in Second Kings 2 and 11. Praise the name of our God. Amen. You have to have a tendency to 
think that God gets mad when you fail because that's your experience in human relationships. But God doesn't operate that way. Even if you don't do everything that God calls you to do, his grace will still abound towards you, Romans 5 and 20. God will still love you. The Bible says where sin doth doth abound, grace did much more abound. But you have a job to do. (laughs) And it isn't just about you being blessed. A lot of people start the race, but not many stay at it over the long haul. Finishing is more important than starting. You inherit the promises through faith and patience. Make a commitment that you're going to love the Lord to the best of your ability. Determine now that you're going to keep running your race no matter what. Praise the name of Jesus. You have to seek God with your whole heart. But I want you to know that it's worth it. Hallelujah. I got my eyes wide open this morning. And I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. The one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can't come to the Father except by me. Looking unto Jesus, who Ella Blackson told us yesterday, to praise and to magnify, to lift him up in all circumstances. Looking unto Jesus, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all we're able to ask, say, or think. Looking into Jesus, who calls us his friend. I know the storm is going to rise and the wind's going to blow, but I'm, I decided to walk with Jesus. I decided, I made up my mind that nothing is going to tear me away from him. I started in Jesus, and I'm going through. Yes, yes, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Father God, we thank you this morning for your strength. We get strength this morning from you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise the name of our God. Help us to not doubt you. Help us no matter what the storm rises and wind blows, that we keep our focus on you because you're everything we need. Oh, God, have your way in the life of this our people. In Jesus' name, pour out that joy, Lord, that unspeakable joy, because you have the joy and full of glory. Lord, we just thank you. Our love just bubbles over. It's bubbling over in our hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus, realizing who you are, what you've done for us, and we give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your holy, wonderful, and righteous name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.